Thank you very much. I'm more than pleased uh, to be with you this evening. And before I talk about the Israeli experience uh, in water, I want to tell you to, to tell you about two anecdotes from my personal uh, life in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that somehow are connected uh, to this uh, matter that you asked me to talk about. You declared I am uh, absolutely uh, accepted the declaration that Israel today is the leading country in, in uh, managing water. Managing water uh, brought us to the situation that Israel, that is in a hard country, that in 1948 uh, was declared 70% desert uh, with a, a lake of uh, water for, to, for the people themselves, today is able to give 100% of the needs, not only to Israel itself, to the Palestinian as well. And I'm sure you know that uh, uh, in the peace agreement that we signed with uh, Jordan, we are also giving water to Jordan as well. And I believe that to learn about the experience that we have in Israel could be useful not only for us, but for any other countries who's suffering from desert area and suffering from lake or, uh, of water. But permit me to begin with two anecdotes uh, that I think will be interesting for you. More than uh, 15 years ago, I had an interesting meeting. I had many meetings, but I had a specific uh, meeting with President Shimon Peres. Shimon Peres, as you know, his vision was how to change the Middle East. And uh, Shimon Peres began his conversation by, by telling me and some other friends that were in the room, that Israel is lucky because we are in desertic area. We are lucky because we don't have raw material. We are lucky because we don't have oil and gas. Today we have gas, by the way. And we were all surprised why we are lucky. I think we are unlucky in such a situation. But he said, if somebody is going to see what we did in Israel in such situation, he will understand that only country that suffer, suffer because it doesn't have a raw material, suffer because it doesn't, uh, they don't have uh, water, suffer because they don't have uh, petrol, need to find solutions. And Israel finds solutions for many of those uh, problems, and water is one of them. And in the next uh, uh, half an hour, more or less, I will give you an example of what we did in Israel. And I believe an experience of Israel could serve also the same way a country say, like Iran. The second anecdote is about a meeting when uh, 10 years ago, when I led the Israeli delegation to a meeting with all the Minister of Foreign Affairs of uh, the continent of America, from United States till Brazil and Argentina. I went uh, to the meeting in uh, Guatemala, by the way, in the middle of the Arab Spring, in the middle of a war in Syria, in a moment that Israel was seriously involved in doing everything to avoid the possibility of Iran to become uh, nuclear, in a situation that we still don't have an agreement with the Palestinians. And you can understand that when I knew that I had to talk to many different ministers from all the countries of the continent of America. I prepared a file, a big file, with a lot of answer for many, many questions that I was sure that the different minister will ask me about the situation in the Middle East. The first meeting was with President Gaviria, who is the Secretary General of the Organization of Ministers of OEA of America with the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs of Brazil, the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Guatemala, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the uh, United States. And Gaviria looks at me, saw the file that I have in my hand, and told me, Ambassador Avivi, I know you many, many years. I'm sure that you prepared yourself for many questions that, I, that you thought that I'm going to ask you. But I want to tell you one word. I am not going to ask you about Iran. I don't care if Iran has or doesn't have a nuclear weapon. It doesn't put in danger any of the American country. I will not ask you about the situation in Syria. I think it's a problem of Syria, maybe of you, Lebanon, uh, uh, and other countries that are surrounding Syria. I'm not talking about the outbreak. I read enough about the outbreak. I know everything. So I was a little bit quiet. And then I asked him, and what will you ask me? He said, I will ask you one thing. Where are you now? Many, many years, Israel leaded the international cooperation in everything that is sustainability. 
And sustainability is the only problem that we in uh, Latin America, especially in Latin America, but in the third world in general, are very much uh, care of. The sustainability problem creates a situation that millions of immigrants leave their countries and go all over the world. And uh, while going all over the world, we, we, leave, we are losing them in our country. We know about your experience, not only in water, we know about your experience in agriculture, about your experience in uh, medicine, about your experience in education. If you want us to be friends of Israel, we want you to come back to the middle of the stage with the experts of Israel and show us how do you solve this problem in Israel. We need you in this continent. When I came back to Israel and I had an interesting conversation with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, I had to explain to him what I did in the meeting. I told him, you know something, we don't have to speak about our problem. We don't have to defend our uh, position in our uh, uh, problem with Syria or with Iran, with the Arab Spring or with the Palestinians. The only thing that we need to do is to go to the world and tell them that we are ready to participate in this important uh, war for sustainability that the only problem that interested other countries and maybe by doing so, we will not hesitate to make any uh, propaganda about uh, Israel it, uh, itself. Well, I will now talk about uh, uh, the water. And I will tell you that Israel, more than other countries, not only because uh, we are in a hurry uh, area, not only because we have 70% of uh, desert, we, were, we had 70% of desert in Israel, but also because the population of Israel, because of immigration uh, change from uh, 600,000 people in Israel in 48, the situation that today we have uh, 10 million uh, citizens in Israel itself, and we have also 6 million uh, Palestinians that are surrounding us and are dividing with us all the, practically everything, uh, water is included. Uh, our problem with water not began uh, today, it began uh, in 48 when Israel was created. But especially in the 90s, if you remember, uh, all over the world, there was a uh, time and many, many uh, countries suffered from the lack of, uh, of uh, water and the rain uh, in the different countries. Israel, with the new uh, population that we had in that time, uh, seven or eight uh, million people, suffered a lot. And we tried to find a solution. How can we practically uh, do something in order to give our people uh, 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 more, uh, more water? The first program that we did, it was a simple program, was trying to transfer water from the Lake of Kinneret, Lake of uh, Tiberias, as you call it uh, many times, and try it, uh, by that uh, to, to solve the problem uh, of our people. Uh, the first program, as I said, uh, was especially uh, uh, in uh, transferring water from Kinneret to the center of Israel, and uh, to the other part uh, of the country as well. But Kinneret is limited in the quantity of water. Kinneret has suffering also for uh, when, a rain, when we don't have enough rain. If you're taking too much water from the lake of Kinneret, uh, you will have salt in the Kinneret itself. So immediately we had to think about other uh, solutions. Uh, here you have in front of you, I will not read, what is uh, written in the uh, PowerPoint, you can read it yourself, but you can see the different area in the 19 until practic uh, practically till today, that this, this area, Iran included, are suffering in the red uh, part of the uh, picture from Lake uh, of uh, Rainfall. The master plan that was decided by the different experts of Israel was to try and to begin with desalination of water from the Mediterranean, reclamation of water, uh, wastewater from different places and use it for agriculture. Not less important is education for water saving uh, to our people and regulation that will uh, en enable us to use better and uh, to manage better the water uh, that we have. Uh, one of the most important is the treatment of uh, wastewater. Uh, when you are treating uh, wastewater, Practically any drop that is uh, wastewater 
can be an opportunity for clean water in the future. They can use it uh, later on, not only for agriculture. By the way, I talked to different experts that told me that uh, the purification of water from uh, the waste uh, uh, water is good enough to drink it. Honestly, I don't know somebody of us that will drink it, but if we needed to drink it, it's possible to do so. But uh, if, without any doubt, waste uh, water can serve the very much in order uh, to, be, to, uh, to give for the water for the agriculture, uh, for uh, parks, for uh, uh, public uh, necessity, and also uh, for the industry. Uh, Israel have uh, every year 505 million uh, cubic meters of uh, wastewater. We are the only country in the world that is uh, able to treat 93% uh, of the uh, wastewater and use afterwards 85% for agriculture and for public uh, need. I will show you now, uh, I, think, I think it is important to see uh, uh, what is the situation in that area in different countries? As you can see in the picture be, be, uh, behind you, 86 uh, Israel is uh, using 86 percent of uh, the wastewater uh, to agriculture and for public area. Country like United States, a modern country with the best uh, uh, expert in the world, is only one percent of the waste of the water. Spain country that is suffering for high diarrhea as we are suffering, only 70%. You can see Australia, 10%, Italy, 8%, etc. You can see in front of you the number. So if we are talking about the biggest success, before including the, talking about desalination, is the fact that today, in practice, the agriculture of Israel is based especially on the uh, treatment of uh, wastewater, especially from the center of Israel. We have the center of uh, treat of uh, water in Tel Aviv. And from Tel Aviv, we are bringing the water to the south, to the desert of Negev of Israel. Why is so important? It's so important not only because we can use it for agriculture, but while transferring uh, the water to the desert in the south of Israel, we liberate a lot of other area into for construction and for other needed in the center of, uh, of Israel, while in the south of Israel, everything was completely empty. So we're building a new uh, kibbutzim, and new cities, and the new agriculture in the south, based 100% on the result that we had on uh, 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 reuse uh, what, uh, water, uh, without any doubt. When you are using uh, this uh, fresh water that coming from the wastewater in uh, this uh, uh, way, it's an economic growth engine. It gives a better uh, uh, possibility of a cost, effective cost of the water, and it's true the stability of the water that you have to give to everyone all over uh, Israel. I want you to see the numbers of using uh, the uh, consumption of agriculture sector in the, during the year. And you can see that in 1960, 100% of the water that was used for agriculture in Israel came from natural water. Meaning like uh, you say in the beginning, if you are taking the water from the groundwater, easily you will find a salt instead of it, water from the sea will come into the ground. You can see the situation today that instead of a 1,000, 1 billion, 1 billion, 200 million uh, cubic meter that were used for, for the agriculture in 1960. Today, we are using only 350, while more than 900 uh, 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 million cubic meter are coming, uh, first of all, from uh, the treatment of uh, water, wastewater, and another 10% or 7% that you can see downstairs from a uh, uh, brackish uh, water that we found in the desert. So changing the situation from 100 to only uh, 350, 30% three, of the youth gave us the possibility to all the difference transfer it to the citizens themselves and you understand the importance of that. Uh, the consumption of, uh, of uh, uh, water in Israel, you can see in this uh, uh, picture, and so you can see also that today 
desalination of water became the most important part. Effluent water is the second one. And brackish that we are going and taking from uh, the deep uh, land in the desert is the third one. And the water from uh, from uh, the natural from rain and for uh, from the kinet became uh, only thirty percent of uh, that need. Practically, we understood that the treatment of uh, water is not enough, and in order to close the gap between supply and demand, we need also to begin with a new program, a big and important po program of desalination of water especially from uh, Mediterranean, but also in the area of uh, Elad from uh, the Red Sea. There is a good, important uh, thing that we have to remember. Uh, you are not able to, to desalinate all the needed uh, of uh, your country because of different problems. First of all, every new uh, uh, center of desalination automatically is near the sea. The coast of Israel, is used by the different municipalities and the different air for tourists uh, for vacation. You can't one day come and tell them, yeah, we need, we need all the area of the sea in order to create desalination of water and bring it to, uh, to the people to drink. So we had to fight very much with any municipality around in order to convince them how much important is the desalination of water. And you can understand, because of all of you know how it's happened all over the world, that every uh, mayor of a city understands the importance of desalination, was supposed to be in the garden of his neighboring uh, uh, city and not in his area. With a lot of fight, with a lot of uh, decision, with a serious uh, program of the government, we arrived to the situation that at the end of the day, we created five different vessels in desalination uh, water that today are not only giving 100% of the need of Israel itself, but permit us also to, to bring much water to the underground water, much water including to the Kinneret, and to sell and uh, to give water also to Jordan and to the Palestinians themselves. I'm uh, showing you now the number, and you can see that in 2004, only 18 years ago, yes, there was zero desalination of water in Israel. It took us more or less 10 years to have to 160 million uh, cubic meter. But today, in 2020, practically two years ago, we achieved the level of 750 uh, mil uh, billion, million cubic meter uh, for you know that practically, practically, it's answer all the demand of the, uh, the state of Israel and the neighboring country. And I think seriously that is enormously a uh, big uh, success. Uh, surely, uh, the ability to, to, to desalinate uh, water, the efficiency depends also on the price. Because if a cubic meter costs more than one dollar, and it happened to be, you can see, in the list in different uh, countries like uh, Cyprus, it's not economic to use it. We understood from the very beginning that we should create a center that will be able to give less than uh, half, if it's possible, or close to half uh, a dollar uh, for cubic meter. So it will be more or less the same price that we have for, uh, for water you are taking from underground or from the Lake of the Kinneret. I'm happy to tell you, that when we are talking today, the price of, as we are now in 2022, as you know, we are now in around half a dollar for cubic meter. And you know, from your area or for your country where you are now, that the half a dollar for cubic meter is uh, less than the price that the government is paying for water that it takes from the ground. Again, I think it's enormously a uh, uh, big uh, uh, success. Uh, as you can see, Israel continue, by the way, not only uh, to try and to build, if it will be necessary, more centers, but to improve the work of the different centers that we build in a way that it will bring more water uh, with less uh, cost uh, of the water itself. One of the other problems that we have to fight when we are talking about desalination of water, the desalination of water also creates a problem for the neighbor, neighboring area because the desalination of water created a situation that you 
practically has a lot of salt. That's the reason that you can build this uh, center in other places but near the sea and uh, to, to uh, leave all the salt uh, to the sea, uh, back to the sea. Uh, you have here uh, also the third program that I told you, desalination of Brexit water. What happened, I'm sure that you have the same thing in, in, in Iran, although I'm not expert in, in Iran uh, geography, but we found that in desertic area many, many times, and it happened to be in the desert of uh, uh, the Negev as well, there is a underground, some hundred thousand of meters below the, the level, like a big lake of uh, 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 brackish uh, uh, water. Something very interesting that I want to tell you from my experience. When I heard that agriculture in the desert use also a desalination, a low desalination of fresh water, but you have anyway a water that is salty a little bit, I asked them how it works with a different food because we are having a lot of food now today in the desert of the Negev. I was completely surprised to hear that the salty water, as a result of salty water, the fruit is sweeter and not less sweet than it was before. Some kind of protection that the fruit gives to itself that if you give them some level of salty water, the result is a, a much better uh, fruit that today we are using not only for Israel, but also exporting for other countries uh, uh, away, uh, around us. Uh, we also had to, to, to change the public behavior. One of the most difficult thing was practically to educate the people to save water, simply to save water when you are using them. If you tell today, uh, we will talk to different people in Israel, they told you that when you are going to wash themselves and when you are putting sabon on themselves, they are closing the water. And when they wash themselves, they are opening, opening the water. Again, I want to tell you a personal experience. In my first uh, a diplomatic mission, I was in Italy, and I remember that the first night we were walking on the street, and we walked on the, near uh, 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 the center of the city, and we saw a lot, a lot of, uh, how do we call it, Madena, Otano, Tesla Mai. Roma. No, uh, no, we found a lot of water running uh, from uh, the keys. If we tried to close them, it was impossible to close. So much we were educated in Israel not to, no, to, not to permit the water to be lost, that we were surprised that in Italy they use it open and the water are running all the time uh, all over uh, the city. I'm sure if you visited uh, Rome, you know what I'm talking uh, about. Another problem was how to make legislation that will force the uh, different uh, municipality uh, to behave differently with water. In the past, 100% of uh, uh, the activity of water in Israel depend on the different municipality. The municipality are caring about policy because they, did, they are very much caring about the parks and the garden. What they did practically was uh, to give uh, different prices, less price for the water that is used for garden or for park, for a uh, municipality park, and they put a, a much more a price for the water that is coming from home. First of all, it's not a good idea. Secondly, it's not an honest one. And thirdly, it creates a situation that you are using much more uh, water uh, than you need in public uh, uh, public area. So the, the, the other decision was to force them to take the same kind of, uh, of prices for the water and to try to save it. How we save it? I tell you the most important thing that we are using today in order uh, in a park, but also in garden in our uh, 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 home and in agriculture is the system I'm sure you heard about drip irrigation. What's in drip irrigation? Drip irrigation is a system that by computer gives to, to every flower or every tree or everything that is in your garden or in, uh, in the agriculture precisely the quantity of water that is needed and not one centimeter more that is needed. And it gives it in the best time of the day during the night, for example, in order not to lose. I give you two numbers in order to understand. If the irrigation is a normal irrigation that you can see in 90% of the country of the world, 
you are losing by every irrigation 85% of the water. And the flower or the, uh, or, or the product receive not more than 15%. By using the drip irrigation, we are using in practice 95% of the water. And I can tell you this, including in my personal, somebody is uh, talking and I can't hear myself. Yeah. Please mute your uh, microphones while the speakers are speaking. Please mute your microphones. Thank you. I can tell you that my personal experience in my home. I'm talking now for my home in uh, Jerusalem, and we have a garden in my home, and I have two small computers. Each one of them costs something like $100, not more than that. And they are dividing precisely to the, wa the water to every flower in the garden, according to the need. So the, the quantity of water is much less than uh, it was before. Quality is much uh, better, and the flowers that are growing are much bigger and with much uh, better uh, colors. Today, after the reform, practically every city uh, created a center of, uh, for treating of uh, sewage uh, water and created also a center that is in charge of giving the water to the different consumer and is in charge also the, the, for every money that they receive more than the cost itself to use it uh, for better system uh, in the area uh, itself. Another thing that we put in a, a, a it's part of the treatment of the water, especially in the biggest city, a special sensor that are in charge of seeing if there is a, a leakage of water in the pipeline. And this system that is so efficient that many, many other cities all over the world created it. I want to give you one number. If I'm talking, for example, a city like Istanbul, till 10 years ago, they lost 40% of the water in the pipeline of the city. After the sensor that they built, uh, that we created for them, practically they are not losing more than 10% of the water. And the difference is enormously big. With your permission, I want to come now to another uh, part of the presentation that is the use of the same uh, uh, system, not only for us, but, but also for the countries that are uh, surrounding us. So I will close this uh, one and open the second presentation. It will take me 10 minutes after, afterward, not more than that. That's fine, that's fine, uh, Ambassador, please carry on. Well, I will do it without, without uh, the picture, but I can do it also without. Uh, what I wanted to say is that uh, practically, uh, water, as I told you at the beginning, you are seeing now the picture that I put? No, you, we are still on your uh, previous presentation, previous presentation. So one minute, I'll try to close the other one. Give me one minute only, and uh, I will try. Uh, okay. to... Please. Please. Now you have it. You see it now, no? Oh. Please share share the screen now. Share this. You Thank pass you. forward. You see? Yeah, yeah. We can see now. We can see now. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Okay. Uh, yeah. What the issue, as I said, is also from the political point of view, an important uh, mechanism to create a better situation than peace between uh, the countries. It's not only uh, to solve your problem, but to try to solve the problem of, the, of, of uh, the countries that are behind you. We have a special situation in Israel that we are surrounding by minimum three or four different countries, that each one of them is suffering from the same problem of what has we suffered in the past. And each one of them is important for the security of Israel. So it's our interest to have a practical, constructive approach to the problem of uh, water uh, in this area, and not only to solve uh, our problem uh, uh, of Israel uh, itself. Uh, when we find, when we, we signed a, a peace agreement with Jordan, the first decision was 
that we will give them more than 50 million cubic meter to the northern part of uh, Jordan, and they will try to solve part of the problem that they have with water. I want to tell you that although the agreement between us and Jordan was not only about uh, 50 uh, million cubic meter, we decided the last year to give them another 50 million cubic meter because we know that if the situation in Jordan is improving, practically the possibility of peace improved directly with it, and it significantly uh, uh, help us uh, to increase the relation between us and the and the Jordan. Another interesting program is the Red Sea Dead Sea uh, tunnel that we are now building between the Red Sea and the Dead Sea in order, first of all, to bring water to the Dead Sea, but also to desalinate water. What happened? Uh, practically on Aqaba, in the south of uh, Jordan, they decided to put a new mechanism, new uh, center for desalination of water. And the idea of Jordan was to desalinate more or less uh, between 50 and 100 million cubic meter and to transfer them to the north of Jordan. In the conversation that we had uh, with the king of uh, Jordan, we did, we've offered him that instead of transferring the water to the north, that he will sell it to Israel, 100% to the south of Israel, and we replace every cubic meter that we are taking in the south uh, in the, that we will give him back in the north of Israel. So he will not have to transfer it. We will have more water in the desert and both sides uh, practically will work for that. Uh, in our agreement with the Palestinians, you, do, you know that you don't have a peace agreement with Palestinians, but we have the Oslo agreement. Also, we decided that we will give them uh, more or less uh, 31 uh, million cubic Better for the people who live in Judea and Samaria. Less than uh, 10 years later, we decided automatically from Israel, not because they asked us to transfer not 31, but 64 million cubic meter uh, to the Palestinians, more than twice. You can see, uh, for example, in the picture that I'm showing you now, how the supplies of water that at the beginning was 40, 45 percent double from what we promised to the level today of 60 uh, million cubic meter. And you can understand that it's important very much for the Palestinians. We believe it's important for us as well because when the level of uh, life is improving in the territories, it also helps us. Our main problem with the Palestinians, we are talking about water, that we have only one aquifer that belongs to the Palestinians, to Israel itself. And when we are uh, working so much in order to desalinate water, in order to treat wasting water, in order to be sure that we are not taking more water than is in the agreement, we have more than uh, 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 250 different uh, places in the, in the territories that they take uh, the water from there. They are not doing any uh, uh, treatment to the waste uh, water. And the meaning that not treat the water, meaning that the water is running, uh, first of all, uh, to the different uh, river in the area, and later on, it's coming to the underground water. In our conversation with the Palestinians, we are doing the utmost possible in order to convince them uh, that they need to do something in order to improve the quality of water, uh, to treat the wasting water. It will improve the life of the, their people, but it's also important because if not, it puts in danger our uh, life as well. The quantity of water that we are giving today per capita in the, uh, in the territories is 120 uh, cubic meter per capita per day. If you are seeing in the picture in front of you, you can see that the WHO uh, asked the country to be able to give to the people between 50 and 100 uh, cubic meter per capita. If you are giving them, them from the water in Israel, 120, we are given more than double of what they were, we were asked by international society to do. And I hope that it will help us in the conversation that we'll continue to, uh, to have uh, with them. Uh, it's the first time, by the way, that today 96% of the Palestinians and Judea Samaria have access to a regular water supply system. I can tell you that since 67, uh, before the war of uh, uh, 67, only 10% of the citizens, uh, Palestinian citizens, were connected to the water system 
uh, that exist in the area. So 10 times more, every citizen in, uh, in Judea and Samaria is receiving water uh, uh, from us. Another picture that I want to sh uh, show you that the reduction of, uh, of using of water, maybe it will be the last one, the reduction of uh, per capita of consumption of natural water. I told them that today we are using most of the water from desalination water and from treating of waste uh, 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 water. If you are looking at the number here, you will see that uh, in 67 more or less, 504 million uh, cubic meter were used uh, by, by the people of Israel, uh, by the people of uh, Palestinian as well. Today we are using only 98, meaning that the family in Israel used from natural water that we have in the springs, in Lake of Kinneret, and in the underground water, only 20% of our needs. And all the rate, 80% of the water is the result of what we increase by desalination and purification of water. I think this is a super important uh, for all of us. And the technology is a key, practically key, game changer. You can see that in Israel today, 86% of the use of its water coming from treated water. You can see that in other countries, only 70%. The last, maybe I will show you that practically, if you are talking about desalination in 2004, it was zero. Today we have a level of 600,000 uh, uh, a million cubic uh, meter. And this is uh, the result of a lot, a lot of work uh, that we did in Israel itself with the, with the experts that came not only from Israel, from our immigration from different countries. What is important uh, to tell you is, we did it in Israel. We are more than willing to give the experience to any other country who need it. We, we believe that if we are working to improve the life of people all over the world, we are improving our life as well. We are improving the possibility to have peace. We are improving the possibility to live better. And Israel is all today uh, through uh, the different organizations of United States and uh, of other international organizations like SICA, that include Iran, are more than willing uh, to offer our uh, uh, knowledge and our experience to other countries as well. I hope very much for you. And I hope very much for the people of Iran that the problem of uh, water will be solved in Iran. The people of Iran were always during thousands of years a great friend of Israel. We're in a special situation that the uh, specific government of Iran today are enemies, but the people of Iran are not enemies of Israel. And we care about them, we care about their future, and we'll be more than happy if something will be changed for them as well. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for Ambassador. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, for, uh, Ambassador, for that, an insight into the success of Israel in uh, achieving all these uh, goals that uh, they had and uh, how they have managed to uh, all these fantastic things uh, all around the world. I mean, as far as I know, uh, uh, the, the Israeli technologies of desalination is being used around the world. And uh, uh, it is very important that we learn the lessons anyway, learn the lessons. Thank you so much again. And uh, please stay and uh, hopefully we will get to the question and answer later. If, if not, people can send their uh, uh, questions. Uh, I would appreciate if people can put their questions, or th those who are online, uh, into the chat area and we can ask uh, Ambassador later if he's not present. I will email to him and we'll get the answers. I will be more than happy to send you the answer for any questions.